YouTube, what the crap's going on? Air of Carthage back in Total War Rome 2. Got another online replay for you. This time I'm going to be taking the Roxolani against Parthia in a massive cavalry mashup here in the Battle of a Kink. Um, probably not the best map, honestly, to be bringing a nomadic faction. I didn't pay attention to that. The more woods there are, the less effective your arrows are going to be, but I guess the good thing for me is that means that my opponent's Persian light archers and his two uh, horse archers are going to be suffering the same detriment. So you're going to look at my army. It's almost a full stack um, of horsemen, which when it's the Roxolani, it's any army is all horsemen, of course. I brought um, armored horse archers, which are kind of cool. They're a little cheaper than noble horse archers. Um, well, these guys are noble horse archers. Yeah, armored horse archers are a little cheaper than noble horse archers, but still have nice armor. Not great armor, but it's better than standard horse archers. And the nice thing about this is that I don't believe Parthia can field... Actually, actually, I think Par Parthia can field noble horse archers. I can't remember. But I brought them because if my opponent um, didn't bring... Um, you know, a lot of people just like bringing the standard horse archers because they're cheap and they still have all of those features. Well, Noble Horse Archers and Armored Horse Archers are better in melee um, and more resistant to missiles, and that's the reason why I brought them. And it's basically because I can use these guys to um, uh, basically have an easier time to win a skirmishing fight. Enemy Slingers aren't going to be as good against them. Um, enemy, <coughs> enemy Arrows will have a harder time getting them. It, there's just a lot of factors that play into it. Plus, Whenever they're out of ammo, they'll be a little more effective in melee than just standard horse archers, which are absolutely worthless in melee. Now, does this mean that you should always bring armored horse archers? I don't think so. It kind of just depends on the situation, and you have to feel that out. Here I take the charge of his cataphracts with one of my cheaper um, step, arm or, yeah, step armored lancers, and then I charge into his noble blood cab with a step armored lancer, um, just basically to pin him down, uh, take a few losses, get them to use their trample charge, on the, uh, the the camel cataphracts. Great use of a camel cataphract right here, because again, you can see that punishing charge plus the scare effect on horses. You can see that this unit, for instance, is, is flanking the camel, but actually has the worst morale, because the scare effect from the camels is pretty big. And these uh, step armored lancers are very cheap units. They're less than 600 talents. Over here, my uh, heavier step noble lancer absolutely crushed. Um, a noble blood cav. Um, so most of the time, uh, shot cavalry doesn't do all that well in, uh, in a grind out fight. But uh, when it comes to cavalry in general, the the step factions have extremely good cav, very good. And most of the time, it ends up being better than this, uh, the typical factions. I was actually surprised at how many kills these Persian light archers were getting on my my cav here. But it was massed fire, and uh, they do take out my uh, my step noble lancer there. And these camel fracks are really beasting it up here. Well, I say that. They're actually getting torn apart now that they're in a in a melee with my Sarmatian horsemen. Sarmatian are very good horsemen for the price. Yeah, you can see that. Parthia's army, I didn't really get a chance to show you the whole thing. He's actually got a line of hoplites, four foot archers, um, several cataphract units, and a camel cataphract. His general is in a royal cataphract. He had three horse archers, like standard ones, which did get absolutely shredded, as you can see by my uh, armored horse archers, as I'd hoped, which now means that my opponent has no mobile skirmishing contingent. But you can see um, here I kind of went in piecemeal uh, trying to back charge some of his hoplites, and I got a good number of kills on him, uh, but you know, it, it just eventually is turning against me because these uh, uh, my men are just outnumbered here, and I, and I start losing some of them to a route. So, I kind of have to pull back from that initial engagement and start rethinking things here. So I, I still have plenty of ammo left with my uh, with my bow horsemen. So I, I've got them into heavy shot now, to where all their shots should be a little more damaging, though it does uh, go slower reload. There's a lot of forest here too, so it makes skirmishing more difficult, like I said it would be. But you can see his camel spearmen. Great job bringing camels on the part of my opponent, actually. That's that's one of the dangers that Parthia can field against step factions. Uh, number one, they have infantry. Number two, they have foot skirmishers. And number three, they've got camels and elephants. Uh, and if you use those effectively, Parthia can actually be a, a, a decent uh, faction to use against the step factions because they have uh, more tools in general than the step factions. But you can see my uh, horse archers taking very few losses um, to his uh, his masked archer fire. Uh, number one, because of the the trees, and then number two because of their armor. So even with all that massed uh, fire, he's only killed like 10 or 11 of my horse archers. 
and I'm able to just get away from his royal cataphracts. There's no reason for me to stay there and fight that. Yeah, Sarmatian horseman there. So let's zoom. Uh, let's take an overhead view. You can see that I have my opponent completely surrounded. I've got one group of horse archers uh, working his men back here in the back, and then I've got a second group of horse archers over here taunting his general. And I'm trying to lure his general into a fight with my Sarmatian horseman, which would be bad for him. He sees this, and his uh, royal cataphract general is going to retreat. But because of the trees and their heavy armor, I've still yet to kill a single one of the, the royal cataphracts with my, my horse archers. But you can see, this is what you want as a step faction. You want your opponent bottled up like this. Um, you don't want them to be able to maneuver, and you kind of want them to be forced to, to box up. Now, boxing up can be bad, of course, if you have very light horse archers and they have slingers and pikes. You can be in some serious trouble. But in the case uh, that I'm in right here, having my opponent uh, completely surrounded like this is good. And it's because, you know, like, say for instance that I did decide to charge his infantry, which eventually I will, because I don't have enough ammo to kill them all. I can charge his infantry... Oh, here, let me show you. I can charge... I think I'm doing it right now. I can charge his infantry... No, I'm not doing it quite yet. Like this. And then follow up with a rear attack from here. And uh, normally it wouldn't be good to fight Hoplite straight on with Cab, but whenever you can get that quick rear charge or flank charge, see that? I'm set up from every angle to be able to support. So here comes the charge that I just mentioned. So see, I'm going to go into his um, Persian Hoplites, into his Mercenary Hoplites, Noble Blood Cab, just take all of his units from the front, and then I'm going to immediately follow up all of this cab in the back with Shock Cab. So you see how I'm fixing from the front with my cavalry that has better melee defense, my melee cab, and then I'm going to follow up with my Shock Cab, which has a better charge. Um, so that's the cavalry that I want to come from behind, is the Shock Cab. So yeah, you can see him plowing through the archers, and then I'm going to plow on into the back of this infantry. They actually got here a little late, because my depleted units had already gotten mopped up by that uh, mercenary hoplite. But you can see this flank over here for my opponent is collapsing. His, um, his hoplites are surrounded, and they're starting to waver. And that's even with the uh, raised banner and stuff from his general. So yeah, these guys are now surrounded, and they're getting forced out of formation, and they're just not going to be as effective. Uh, whereas on this flank, I've still got my opponent pinned with a couple of units. And uh, now I'm going to follow up with my uh, other cab. As soon as this hoplite's gone, I can charge across into the back of his remaining hoplites. Let you see that again, so a lot of trees. And then his general was one of the strongest units he had left, so I just mobbed his general with all six of my armored horse archers, including my general, and then some step armored lancers. So see how I can't take the cataphracts one for one with these units, but because I brought the horse archers that had better melee attack, I'm able to use them for a mob attack, kind of like this at the end they're actually still a, a substantial threat, whereas standard horse archers would have just gotten completely mopped up by cataphracts. Here you can see why, again, that you surround your opponent with the horsemen, otherwise his spears can be pretty effective. So hoplites are not actually the best unit to bring against heavy horsemen. There's a few reasons for it. Now, if the only thing that you're trying to do is stop an enemy cab charge, hoplites can do this. Um, if you're looking for a unit that can hold off enemy cav for a long time, hoplites can do this. If you're looking for a unit to kill enemy cav, heavy cav that is, very quickly, hoplites cannot do that. Um, their attack and their weapon damage is just too low, even with a big bonus versus cavalry. They don't, they don't typically kill cavalry very fast. There are certain situations where they may, but the heavier the cav and the more punishing their charge, Hoplites actually just don't inflict a whole lot of losses on them. Now, in the recent patches where um, cavalry takes more damage disengaging from infantry, it certainly helped hoplites quite a bit versus cav. So I'm not sitting here trying to say that they're no good against cav. I'm just saying they're risky. So like in this scenario here, you can see how I was able to kill the hoplites as soon as I could get them surrounded. And even when I engaged them from the front, how my men still got a fair number of kills on them because their kill rate is just slow. Um, so, honestly, hoplites are an interesting unit. I, I used them a, a few videos ago to hold infantry. You can certainly use them to blunt an enemy cab charge, but only in a support role are they kind of good in a cab fight. And what I mean by that is, let's say that my cab charges another enemy cab unit, and then I take a hoplite out of formation attack and throw it into the back of the enemy cavalry for support. In that situation, it will do pretty good. But as far as just being able to intercept a cab charge and mow them down head on, it, it actually takes a while. And so that's the reason why it can sometimes be kind of frustrating when you bring hoplites and you see them getting killed by cavalry. Um, they have to be used a certain way to do it. Uh, barbarian spearmen are typically a little better at killing cavalry quick because they have that, um, 
uh, what is it called, cavalry counter tactics ability that really boosts their bonus versus large. Um, so those guys are better if you're looking to kill cavalry fast, but they're going to be shakier in the sense, too, that they probably don't have as much armor or good as shield strength as hoplites. So it's kind of a trade-off. Like, hoplites are a little more overall sturdy unit, but they don't kill the cavalry as fast, whereas the barbarian spears typically are a little shakier unit, but they can kill cavalry a little more specifically um, and quickly than, than, say, like a hoplite could. Hopefully that makes sense. So again, not trying to say hoplites can't kill cavalry. They can but just understand that they're not going to be like a brute killing machine when a cavalry charges you from the front. It's not like Rome 1 where you charge a, a, you know, an armored hoplite or a sacred band hoplite from the front and they just get massacred. That will not happen on Rome 2, so just be aware of it. Hope you all enjoyed this battle. This one was interesting to me. Got to take two cav-heavy factions against each other. My opponent decided to use infantry instead of all cav, which was an interesting choice. With the fact that um, Parthia has access to Noble Blood Cavalry, I probably would have capitalized on a mix of Cataphracts, Noble Blood Cav, and um, yeah, I'm not sure what else I would have used. Maybe just some light spearmen and a few foot skirmishers to try and keep some of my cav busy or to support in a cav fight. Honestly, I would have brought elephants, too. Um, it's risky because um, both factions have access to horse archers, and horse archers are a big danger to elephants, a huge danger to them. But elephants are a big danger to cavalry if they get into the rear of a cav fight. Um, so it's just something to be aware of as well. So Parthia does have elephants and camels at its disposal, which does give them kind of a leg up in, a, in an all-cav engagement versus um, some of the step factions. But the step factions in general, like this unit right here, Sarmatian Horsemen, I say in general, the Roxolani in particular, this is a very cost-effective horseman, the Sarmatian Horsemen. And some of their um, uh, shot cav is also cost-effective in the sense that it's not going to win a lot of battles, but it can deliver a punishing charge which will soften up an enemy for these guys to finish off. So, anyway, that's my thoughts on this one. Hope you all enjoyed it. Air of Carthage, signing off for now.